Jay Leno. Hi, Jay. Hi everybody, how you doing? And this is a show about cars. It's fun to drive cars that are really different. This um, one's a death trap. Oh, I see, because... Because it's dangerous to ride. And motorcycles. And, well, anything that rolls. Like driving a two-story building. Oh, my God, strong as an ox! Explodes. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Yeah! Or makes noise. Have you ever run a dragster? No, I haven't. This is Jay Leno's Garage. Start your engine. Tonight. Now, that is one of the greatest motors of all time. I get together with a man who loves American muscle as much as I do. You were the tool boy before the show. That was at the YMCA. That was years ago. Detroit's own Tim Allen. He cut me off. My name's Jay Leno. Hey, Jimmy. I do my best to try and impress NASCAR legend Jimmy Johnson. I'm in second gear. Let's punch it. An old school icon. Who would have guessed they'd still be building the Mustang 50 years later? Meets its grandson. Legacy is still here. Legacy is still here. <laughs> we hit the drag strip with pro stock champion Erica Enders Stevens. Find a spot and drive to it. So we're gonna have you focus today. Focus. Can you focus? <laughs> It'll be the first time. <laughs> On this episode, we ask, what is a muscle car? It's just a lot of fun to drive. Is it about the styling? Ooh. Ah. No. Is it the colors? What a piece of history this is. Great color. No. Is it the interior? I love the dash. Are those Ferrari gauges? Yes, they are. No. It's about the power. Plenty of punch. Plenty of punch. So what started it all? The desire for speed produced the hot rod. And why are these cars so valuable today? I'll give him 40 grand for it right now. <laughs> so buckle up. If you can find a seatbelt. Let's do this. <laughs> and we revisit a golden egg. episode when dinosaurs roamed the earth because that's what i'm driving here a dinosaur but you know the muscle car era didn't last nearly as long as the dinosaurs did only from about 1964 maybe to 1972 and that's kind of stretching this is probably the epitome of muscle cars a dodge challenger with the 426 hemi engine in it with two four barrel carburetors four speed gear shift and the pistol grip hand shift. This is the way it came from the factory. This car is kind of like your sister's high school football boyfriend. Big, stupid, but oh my God, strong as an ox! But before we can talk about muscle cars, we gotta go all the way back to World War II. Returning GIs had a new sense of freedom and do-it-yourself attitude. Add that to a booming economy and a homegrown culture of speed was born. The desire for speed, which contributes to the sports car craze, has also produced the hot rod. Many young Americans spend their spare time and money souping up stock car engines to get more speed out of them. A decade later, we saw the commercialization of that spirit. When car companies took the hot rod as philosophy and created what became known as the muscle car era. I was fortunate enough to be a high school kid all through the muscle car era. It was a very unique time, probably never to be repeated. The Hemi Cooters, the Challengers, the Road Runners. So why are these cars still so valuable and popular today? Right now, we're going to go see a muscle car buddy of mine, another guy who grew up in the middle of the muscle car era. He's probably the ultimate muscle car guy growing up in Detroit. Let's go check out his stuff. He likes to sleep a lot. Hey, Tim. How are you? What? Yeah, that's what I said. I th think you hear it. Hear it starting to go. Will you come take a look at your stuff? I should have had my staff come down and open the door, but. But you don't have a staff. I don't have a staff. That's right. 
you know, all the years we've known each other, you've been to my shop. This is my first time here. So it's not that cool. you weren't invited like 40 times. But I you're a busy guy, Jay. I, I couldn't find, yeah, I'm working. That's yeah, the trouble. That's yeah, right. yeah, you're a retired guy. Got a job. That's a real cobra. Is this a real cobra? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the confused thieves. It's a very complicated process. Turn one left, and then now you got to rub your stomach. Good. You're the same. Uh, now, that is one of the greatest motors of all time. And 88 was about the low point, wasn't it? That's yeah. about when these cars were as cheap as they were. They were going for like right. this guy 70 or $80,000. This thing handles really well, but it's a little visible for me. I'm yeah. a little more shy than you. Well, answer. people don't throw things at me, so that's Woo, the difference. Here we you know, go. There's that, that, that son of a, you know, and then you get that. <laughs> yeah. you know, that tool boy, I yeah. swear yeah, to yeah. God. If I You're a Detroit guy. It doesn't get more made in Detroit than this. 62. 62. 62. Bubble top. One of my favorite cars. But it, I, I think it's a weak engine. They drag these cars a lot, and they didn't last very long. Yeah. Well, not... Originally, it was a truck engine. It was right, a 348, right, right. and then they took it to 409. And of course, the classic Beach Boys. Song, right. Yeah. I like the fact it's a bench seat. I love bench seats yeah. and a little shifter on there. Little tiny brakes like this. And of course, the famous GT 350H, it's a Hearst car? Hearst four-speed. Wow, Only... that's a rare one. You could rent these from Hearst. Hearst right. was the first. You could rent a racer. It was 50 cents a mile, right. which was crazy money back in the day. And this, well, that's as nice a GTO as I've ever seen. Well, this is a rare, rare, rare bird. It's only got, um, I think, 1,500 miles. It was a drag car only. Sexiest thing about this car, the tachometer outside the car. I think this era of GOAT was one of the best eras ever. Okay. I... Tim's collection of American muscle is a testament to his passion for these cars. And this, this is a sleeper to end all sleepers, isn't it? From the peak of the muscle car era all the way back to this 55 Ford. 55 Ford, and it's got a Bentley interior, and it's got a Hotchkiss chassis under it, huge brakes, and then this is a out of a real GT40. It's aluminum 427, but right. about 707 and a quarter horse. This is one of my favorites. I thought you just did a wonderful, wonderful job on this one. This body style at the time was way more popular than the Chevy body style, but for Nobody some reason, did it. Ugly ducklings, yeah. I call it. I had to pick cars that no one else liked because I was much like that in high school. But this is a You know, not much has changed. <laughs> Well, you know what's interesting? Every time in the old days when Tim would come on The Tonight Show, we would have some sort of race. Actually, we just wanted to see who could do the longest burnout. This is your wife's car? Yes. Tim, this, is, this isn't really fair. You know, I, I just drove my wife's car to work today, too. I feel bad. I can't compete against this. Never underestimate immaturity. But, Jay, this is, this is a dragster. This is a professional dragster. No, no, it's just a V6 Buick with an extra turbo jump. This is your wife's car? Just a few simple modifications. Tim Allen, 159 feet. We need to clear the air. Let's get two equal cars in performance, and we'll each get in one, and we'll see who does the best burnout. I'll end up in a Fiat, and he'll have like some... No, no, no. We have two identical Hellcats. Hmm. Sam, this isn't like 20 years ago. We'll finally clear this up once and for all. I think we do this maturely. All right. We do it as grown-ups and we do it without trashing each other. It's a good idea, no right. trash talking. We'll do it like men. That's right. Yeah, I got it. All right. Like adults. That's right. <laughs> Better buckle up, little boy. Settle us once and for all. We pulled out two 2015 Dodge Challenger SRT Hellcats. These cars have about 300 horsepower more than anything ever produced in the muscle era. <laughs> These are the strongest muscle cars in America. And I'll use mine to kick Tim's batacle area. You'll always be the tool man, Alan. It's called outdoor man, bitch. You were the tool boy before the show. <laughs> that was at the YMCA, that was years ago. You look like my wife in that car. You know, the sad thing is, I do look like your wife. What's that supposed to mean? You getting ready for this? I don't know. You said it. 
That's right, I did. Let's do this. Hey, CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.